So morning guys, back, um, video number four I believe, and today is the day of starting to try and get this job back on track. If you haven't watched part one, part two, part three, where getting to the job, fitting it, and then realizing something had happened, maybe not gonna give that spoiler away just yet, go back and watch those because this series is gonna be a long one. And it's um, a little bit up and down, emotionally and uh, physically, lots to do. Okay, so it might feel like deja vu, but it's Monday morning now. It's bank holiday. Wasn't really meant to be working today, but tomorrow is a deadline where we need to fit all this again. All of these have been resprayed and they are ready to go. So it's this whole rack, all those backings over there, this rack over here, and we've got this pile here, panel, trims, a whole pile here, all of these, all of these, all of these, and this panel. And perhaps a few other bits that we may have missed, don't know. Uh, looks like we've made it and we've got more in than we did last time. Yeah, we got in all the doors and trims this time, so we don't need to do a second load the second day because this is going to be three days fitting. All right, guys, so if you are liking our content, feel free to like and subscribe and join the membership. It really does help. As you can see, everything is empty, van all loaded, ready to go, getting to site for half past seven in High Wickham. So we've got to leave here at quarter to seven. Just see how the days go. I'm not going to jinx myself. Take it one day at a time. See you in the morning. Right, guys, so we're here at half past seven. We're just going to see how the day goes. Not um, hoping for anything today. We're just going to unload the van. Raining just yet, but we have got a gazebo. So, um, yeah, if it does start pouring down, we can get the gazebo up because that was slow last time. Um, so, yeah, we're going to crack on, do what we did in video one, I believe. Get everything in, dust sheets down, start assembling because the bearers are done. Hopefully we can, um, yeah, pick up some pace today. See you in a bit. Right, so we got here about half past seven. I uh, spoke to the customer, got our sheets down by about quarter past eight, and this was stacked full to the brim like you saw in the previous video. So that's unloaded, half past nine, ready to crack on. So since we've been here, it's been painted blue, so it's a little bit darker. And we need to be careful of the walls now because they're finished. But we've got all the components in. We're using, a, we're using dusting cloths in between just to protect our work, just to be overcautious. And the bearers are down from the last video. So we've got the bearers down and eight carcasses together. So we need to get the 10 carcasses done today, but eight should be relatively simple. This is what we got here. So yeah, we're gonna set up the time-lapse and crack on and get these carcasses together, but it's just a matter of putting the biscuits in place, finding out the right components, slot them together, and we're using um, a mixture of 550s and 450s um, for the construction. All lights just gone out and 30 mils for the backings screw wise okay so um we have got one carcass together it went together really easy because we didn't have to pre-drill all the screws just went back into the same places um, no pre-drilling needed just straight in so we've cleared the space that is going there we also managed to cut out for the sockets in the workshop which was quite handy we've got two there one there we got one on the tv panel there which means there's no faffing around here straight together because we would have had to do that on site last time anyway so we're going to get that in pull this cable through there is a back box to go in here um, which the electrician will do but that is big enough for a back box to sit in um yeah happy days we're going to get that in and move on to what what are we going on for next Oh, so we're going for the middle unit here down. Okay, so below the TV. Yeah. So this is the left hand, and then we're going to go across. Then we can get our TV panel in. That is the next stage, cutting that, because that is basically 10 mil oversized, this TV panel. So we're going to get this unit in. Then the bottom, and we're going to get that TV panel in. You can see it's biscuited um, on two edges. We decided not to make it exactly the right size, just in case there was half a mil here or there discrepancy because sometimes it does happen. So we're just gonna scribe it in, in width and in height, but we will get to that in, in a moment. But um, I mean, I think, what do you reckon? We're gonna try and get all carcasses done first, Sean. Even if they're not in place, they could just be floating around. Yeah. I think we should just try and get all the carcasses done. And, I'd say, um, I'd say we don't want to always, I suppose, two more Yeah, yeah, we'll finish and, yeah, so we can put everything together. Yeah. And then we can fiddle around with that panel. 
yeah, all right, well, that's good. Um, because if all the carcasses are made, we can get 80% in place. Well, we can get 50% in place and yeah, then start filling around. We're at half past 10. Second unit is made, about to slip that in. And um, yeah, we'll start taking shape. Um, Sean's lining up the unit number three, getting those pieces ready. Shall we get this in place, Sean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's that detail because the door is sitting in that little rebate there. Lovely. See the biscuit slots, that's going to accept the panel. Also got biscuit slots here. So the panel is going to slot into there, but we need to take the height and the width first, cut it down with a plungy. So unit three on the blue is about to be flipped up on edge. It's going to be easy to get this side on. This is what it looks like. And yeah, if we flip it up, then we can then just sit the side on and line it up, It'd be a lot easier. Um, but for these carcasses, it's a mixture of pockets and biscuits and screws. And we're using 550s for these chunkies um, because we've got 25 mil components. Um, there's a lot of open cubbies and a lot of doors and lots of joints on this one. So we had to use pockets on some of them. It was the only method we could use. Sean's just putting some biscuits. Oh, there we go. He's preparing all of these because um, we can just jump on these pretty soon. These all got assembled, didn't they, before? Yeah, so these all got assembled, so they all go together very simply. So we've got the third big unit ready, ready to go in. Um, I need to fit a bracket on the bulkhead there for the um, designer lady. She forgot it, so I need to screw something on there before we do commit. We're going to get it in place, but we could just shift over ever so slightly to then give ourselves space to scribe this panel. A mixture of screws, biscuits, and pockets. Sean's on the second lower unit for around the corner. He's already got one done. That is one of them. The aim is to get this one in place now. To give us some more space, I could then get the top bulkhead unit in. You'll see this unit is taller than this unit. It's the way I had to design the unit in order to minimize scene fixings and joints between the two because obviously we didn't want two pieces of 25 together seam. Um, like this, for example, you can only see one 25 when, there's, when that's joined. But we've got an 18 mil piece as the side of that carcass. So when the door goes on, you'll only see the division. So there's a little bit of trickery going on with pockets and different ways of joining units. So yeah, that's going to go in. And then we'll have the bulkhead unit coming from the top of that to sit on top of this one. Okay, so that unit is in now. We've moved this out of the way to give us more um, angle to get that in because we didn't want to damage it. It's really heavy too. Um, now we just shifted it over a little bit more than we need. So we're going to get that in and see what it looks like. It's two o'clock, not doing too badly. We've got two more of these upper carcasses to go. So these upper carcasses are for the library unit over here. So the tall units with the thick shelves. So um, before we do that, we want to get this ledge in here. So this top. So it's not full depth. It didn't need to be. Um, but you're seeing a bit how we are going to um, fit these units on the top and also pinch or squeeze these backings into position without needing fixings. You'll see that in a bit because it's um, a nice time-saving little tip that you may want to know about. So. Isn't it, Sean? Yeah. Right. Well, these are the pieces that we just need to assemble. Anyway, we're going to get that ledge in. It's a fixed width and depth, so there's no scribing necessary. And um, the only bit that you're going to see on the side is that bit. Hence the reason it's painted there. Um, it's trimmed, or arises have been taken off all the way around, back and sides and front. Um, yeah, I'm going to get it in now. Um, Sean has fixed these units into position. He's fixed them down. So we've just fixed down into the bearers two, two, and four. Okay. Um, just We've just screwed dead center of the bearers at the bottom. But before we did that, we pulled the cables through. There we go. That's ready for the electrician now. And we made sure that the voids are the same either side because we've gone for about 100 mil trims, give or take. Over here, we're not doing too bad. We've got this bulkhead unit made, so that needs to be flipped around the other way and sit within that void. At the top, it's going to be sitting on top of that. Um, hence the reason we haven't 
We've got a piece here, you'll see that in a bit. So that's gonna take most of the weight. But remember, we've got this panel to go in here. So before this goes in, we need to cut this panel to suit because we just didn't wanna take the risk of cutting it exactly to size, just in case it was a mil or two off. So that goes in, then this unit can go in after. So let's get that legend on. Okay, I've just balanced the camera there. Let's see if we can get away with that while we get the legend in place so you can see it. Yeah, 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 to give our three mil tolerances. 21. Overhang. Yeah, front. And then what have you got? So it's, what, what have you got now? Is it always flush? Is it three, is it three mil? Or is it flush? Well, we'll soon see. Well, you're flush there. No, you're not. That's about flush there. What have you got there? 2 mil in. Have you got your 21 mil? I've got about 21 mil here and I'm flush. What have you got? I'm what have you got? Um, on the edge, I'm still 2 mil in. So there we go, ledge in. We are just working out where it stops, discussing it because we haven't got our drawings today. Who knows where they went, disappeared. I think we left them at the workshop. But there's a certain detail here. Um, I think we had like a three mil gap or something like that between the ledge and the width, total width for the carcasses. But there we go. This upper unit was not meant to be the same depth as the lower unit. Okay, so that was the plan. Um, Kim, the designer, wanted the upper unit to house books of up to 300 mil, 300 mil max. Didn't want it to look chunky, but they still wanted the lower carcass to have more space. So the lower carcass, as you can see, is deeper top carcass is less deep so basically when we put these carcasses in you'll see in a moment the back sails past here up against here we're then going to put a little little strip six mil away screw that down to create like a six mil channel so we've got a 25 mil strip that's going to get screwed down and use our six mil packers and gauge that six mil before we screw it down but we need to work out where this position is first um, we have got an overhang there as well, so you can see the overhang to allow for a 21 mil gap. So we've got a door and a 3 mil gap there. So it's a 21 mil overhang in total. Simply going to screw it in from the bottom with the pre-drilled holes that we have already drilled out in the workshop with 30 mil screws. Okay, so the ledge has been screwed down. It's in place. I got it wrong earlier. It's actually 31 mil from the carcass out to the front of the ledge because we've got a door of 18, leaving a three mil gap behind it. And then we want the ledge to stick out 10 mil past the doors. But we've put this strip of 25 mil in, as you can see, it's just a, an off cut of 25 mil. And we put these little packers in place. Okay, and the reason we put these packers in place is it's replicating the thickness of this backing. As you can see, it's overhanging at the bottom. This is upside down. This unit this is the upper unit but we've allowed it so the bottom runs through this is six mil thick as this ledge is in place we're going to screw this strip down just leaving a very slight amount of tolerance a little wobble of, you know half a mil maybe less um, which means then when we pull these out and this is screwed down we have got a six mil or six and a half mil gap for that backing to slide into then we just fix the carcass down through the sides into the ledge. And it's as simple as that. We're nearly at the stage where we can put this unit in. Um, I've had a little think and I think the best way is to get this center unit in. Get that central because we've got a gap in between the units. Um, there's a fat trim going on the front of these carcasses. So we've got a, basically you've got a carcass, then a gap, then a carcass, then a gap, then a carcass. So they need to be spaced equally from the center outwards, both sides. So we're going to get that in. I've marked my marks here. So the inside of that tape to the inside of that tape over there is where the unit needs to be. Sean is just screwing the last screws into this trim at the back. I was talking about earlier. This 25 mil, we've got our 6 mil groove. As you can see there's got a little bit of resistance there and that is going to effectively hold our backing in place okay and stop it bellying out without the need for fixings through the back so Sean is just finishing those off I can remove all of these now I don't need those they are just spacers to help us line up this back trim whatever you want to call it okay I've rigged it up once more I haven't got time to make it perfect so watch this space 
Nu er vi ved at skætte det op. Så bare... Get it on her. Get on our knees. Yeah. I'm gonna have to swap. Yeah. Are you okay? Yeah. Can you get all the way to the other end? You can rest the backing on the trim for the moment. Right. Yeah. Uh, is it going in between this knot? Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. So we're nearly there, aren't we? So we can just slide it forward. Yeah. Hey. Yeah. Beautiful. There we go. Nice. That's good. And the gaps are nice too, yeah. Lovely. I'm going to that, is it? That's yeah, it's just there when we when we just kind of like we're trying to get it up. Little black line. Mm. <sighs> Back. Yeah, there we go. How does that look? Looking pretty awesome. So there we go. We've got our pockets here on the side. We've got another carcass going here. <clears throat> here. We've got another carcass going here. Hence the reason we got these add-on strips for the biscuits. Because once we've got the carcass there, then we've just got a strip that runs all the way up to the top so that's in the right position now so we can effectively just screw those down you can just see here how it looks how it's been squeezed in between it's a really effective way nice and easy and yeah we're just going to get some pockets down before we do get the pockets down we're just going to get a square on here to make sure that this isn't twisted okay because it's not fixed at the bottom Right, we're about 10 past four now. I don't think we've done too bad today, but I'll go over what we've done at the end. It's not far off um, home time. Um, I've rigged up this trim here. If you have a look at the back, if I pull it off, then you'll see at the back, we've got biscuits and that determines the space between the two carcasses, okay? So when they line up on the biscuit slots, that is the gap that we need. So I'm just gonna work that out. I think I have planned the exact number already and then I'm going to mark it out with pencil or masking tape there to be able to work out where this carcass is going. Don't want to get it in the wrong place and then have to slide it left and right. So I'll work that one out. Sean has got an L bracket over here. This one is L bracketed. That is on the far corner. I'm not sure if we're going to get to, we're not sure if we're going to get our drills in between the two carcasses in between here. I think we can do the and wall side and the wall side but we have got pockets there just in case we can get a couple of extension bars to try and get a drill in if so but we've got that bracket there um, just to get a fixing on the two insides just to be safe so yeah i'm going to work out where this one goes and this one goes regarding to the spacing and hopefully we can get these in just for show before we leave be good for the customer to see and um, what it all looks like okay there we go so we've got a 66 mil trim the trim is overlapping this joint here so we don't see the joint by three mil on both sides leaving inside to inside 60 so we've got 60 from this carcass to this start of this tape which means the carcass is starting at that tape masking tape same over here so basically we can just get those in you ready for it sean yeah day has flown by today <laughs> Are we above the high? You okay? Yeah. Okay. Are you as far back as you can be, yeah? Yeah. Okay, you can drop it whenever you feel like it. Well done, as long as you're off the... um. Yeah, that's good, that's good. Perfect. I'm okay. In, no, 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 but we can slide on the backing now. What's stopping it though? Oh, is it because it's not dropped in inside these packers just yet? Oh, it's in now, and now it drops, and now we try and slide it over as gently as we can. Oh, nearly. All right, maybe. That's not touching, is it? Like, no, nothing's touching. Oh, there we go. You all right? I know. As long as your bracket is not in the way, is it? Mm, it's not small, it's quite big as well. There we go. That was trickier than we thought, because... Where we've done it where that add-on strip had to run on through the way we built it to keep the support and be ultimately connected to the other unit to give it more support it got in the way of this unit but we got it in just need to shift over but because we put this bracket in here 
it's touching this trim so we just need to nibble away this add-on strip by about three mil and um, then it will move over let's go for number two manage to nibble that little bit away so that goes in close that up so that's in the right position i'll try and get near the wall again yeah yeah but you have to Oh, no, yeah, look, we have, look. Yeah, but it's on the top, so it's not going to hamper us. The other one was, we're trying to get it underneath. Right, I'm going to try and lift it. <coughs> Am I bad? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. All the way to the wall. Make sure we just passed it. Yeah, that's okay for the moment. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. I take a little bit of the way. One, two, three. Okay. Hey, that was alright, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. That's sweet as. Happy, mate. What's back? <laughs> Got that camera. <laughs> okay, so sorry that you didn't see the full version just there, but I just shoved it there however I could. But there we go. I think that's a nice way to leave the job, isn't it, Sean? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll talk about other details tomorrow. But other than that, I think we are happy to go. It's not going anywhere. We can get that fixed down and fix all the upper units together tomorrow morning. So that's the progress we got on the library unit today. Let's move down. And this is the progress we got on the media unit. So not too bad considering we unloaded in the rain again. Got all the sheets down, all the tools in. Assembled the 10 carcasses once more, um, albeit the bearers were down from last time. But I don't think we've done too bad. Tomorrow we just need to get that in place. Didn't want to rush that one because it's quite heavy, it's actually a bit too heavy, might need to get a lift from the customer maybe tomorrow to help us get that in without scratching it. So there we go, that is day one of the refit. Um, so far it's going to plan, I'm not gonna jinx tomorrow or the day after, but I think we're, we're doing all right. Um, it's looking pretty damn amazing so far. So we're gonna see you tomorrow, 7.30 on the dot, take it easy, don't go anywhere, ciao for now.